Welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. In today's video, I want to share with you an applicant tracking system that I created in Excel. Using this file, you can track your applicants and see how many have passed each stage, how many are in the pipeline, do you have issues in certain uh, departments or with certain recruiters, and some KPIs that you can use to understand your overall performance. Now the file is pretty simple, requires some VBA coding and some trick formulas and you get a pretty good system that you can use immediately using Excel. Now this I'm using Office 365 because I have some Office 365 formulas here. As I mentioned Excel VBA which I use mainly for user forms but also for other uh, um, automations um, so if you have all that you can actually use it create create it on your own and, and have fun with it so if you knew if you're new to this channel my name is Elad I've been using Excel and Google Sheets for more than 10 years and I have been generating this content on YouTube for a while which I hope you will find useful and uh, educational if you did, and this is interesting for you, please hit that like button, click on the subscribe so you don't miss, miss the new videos being posted. All right, so let me walk you through the, uh, the file itself. There's the dashboard. We have the slicers on top. We have all our KPIs like the funnel chart, how many percent have passed each stage, average time in stage in days. Um, the number of people hired, apps per hire, and the days to hire. And on the bottom we have a table that shows our applicant source, how many were hired, how much percentage of that of the entire hiring process, and the personal conversion for each source. How many people we have right now in the pipeline and at which, which uh, stage, and overall the average time to fill a job by source. And of course these slicers will just change everything so if I select something everything all the metrics will change accordingly and this is accurate for all the slicers that you see over here plus the timeline so I can switch between for example June and July and see that the data will change okay this is the dashboard this is the end result um, the main sheet is where you're supposed to be updating the data all the time. The key to building this file is that you have <coughs> a user interface with user forms and those user forms store, up the update, upload information to back-end data sheets that are currently hidden but I'll show them in a second and on those sheets are the pivot tables are built on and that's how the dashboard is created plus of course everything here which is built on those uh, databases so you can see that there's a new ribbon here called applicants tracking and it has six buttons new job update job new applicant applic update applicant clear all slicers and unhide data sheets so let's start from the beginning the flow of this so in the main sheet you have again slicers which will filter this table the idea is that you can use these slicers to find jobs that you want to update. Usually you want to update that you have a new applicant or, or if you want to update the job. So you would just filter like HR coordinator or show me jobs in LA and then you would be able to update something here. And on the right you can see the applicants for the second for the search job. So this would show you all of the active applicants that are relevant for whatever you uh, filter. So if you would filter a certain job, then it would only show those people. So this is just a pretty simple and, and clear mechanism to help you focus on your updates. Let's start from the beginning, see how it looks. If you want to create a new job, you click over here, new job, you get this user form. All through the, the file gray, um, uh, boxes are not uh, for data input, they're just for information. 
and you have either a free text like this, like job ID. So let's call it new one, two, three. Uh, job title and job location, hiring manager, department, job type, recruiter name, internal agency, the opening date, which will give you a range uh, plus minus in the uh, you know date range that you're currently in, and the number of positions between one to ten. Once you click on submit, what this does it creates a new line in a database called jobs database, and you immediately see it over here. Now, if you want to update a job, you have to put your mouse on a certain row. It doesn't matter which, it could be this or this, and click on update job. If I am not on a row that has a uh, job ID, then I'm going to get this message. And if I go here to update job, I can change things like I can change now the recruiter name because I forgot about it, or I can change location, change whatever I want. Click on submit, and now it does show me uh, the. Uh, the hiring manager. You, you can see that in the update job, I can also close the job manually. So for some reason you did not fill all the positions and you can close the job and it will be deleted uh, from here. Now you can still see it here in the status. If you go to manually close status, you will see the new job that we just created and back to status active to see all the uh, active jobs. Now let's go to new applicant and update applicant. Same uh, method here. To create a new applicant, you have to be on a certain job because that applicant is connected to a job. So for instance, if I'm on this row, clicking new applicant will show me, OK, this is, this is the job, the title, and the opening date. Now I select the source, LinkedIn, when this submission date of the, of the uh, CV. Now it has to be in a futuristic date compared to the job opening date. So if the job opening date was 6th of July, this could be like the 8th of July. The applicant name, uh, Tim Brown, and the result. Um, did he pass the uh, CV uh, review? Did he fail? Decline doesn't make a lot of sense, but let's say he passed. This means that he reviewed the CV of this person. He passed that first step, which is the CV. And now we, you see him over here, this line, what the job is, his name, last event, which is the CV submission. He passed and the event date. If he had failed, we would have not seen him here because this only shows actives. Now you want to progress with the uh, pipeline of the recruiting process. So you click on update applicant. Again, if you're not on a row that has an applicant, then it will give you this message. If you click on update applicant, then you get you see their current status, um, the name, job ID, last event, and last event date. And now, what is the next event? So for example, the next step could be a phone interview. The date will always be at least the date of the last event. Otherwise, it's not possible. So you can say the next day they could either pass, fail, decline, or schedule. Scheduled means that you want to make a note to yourself that you have a job interview, uh, phone interview with that person, and you want to update that. So you can put on scheduled, which means that it's still active. And you can write here who completed it. Let's say completed by. Uh, Shannon. Click on submit and now we see that this line turned to phone interview scheduled and the last event is new. Now if I click update applicant again and now I want to say that he passed the phone interview and I will see that line with the past. Now let's say I move to the next step, like the manager interview, and this time he failed. Uh, what will happen is that this line will be removed 
um, as he is no longer active in our pipeline. Those are the four buttons that you use a lot to see um, to manage your jobs and your applicants. Now, as soon as, as a, a job is completed, if, if you have someone that eventually filled their position, let's do it now. The last step here is job filled. Once you select job filled, and I just want to show you that this current job has one open position. So now I want to fulfill that job. Click on job filled and the date. Let's say the person started it. You see that there's no result because job filled means job filled. It's, uh, it's actually an action. And once I click on submit, this will close the, uh, the, the job 451. You see it's not here. It's closed in full now. There are no more open positions. And also the people here, even the active applicants, are no longer showing as active because their job, the job that they were applying to is closed. And this is this is how you flow with the with the uh, events, and um, update um, the job the positions and this changes accordingly. The list sheet is where you can update all the um, different parameters in the drop downs uh, selection during in the user forms. You saw in the job title, job location, and hiring manager that you could select one of these. So this is coming from here, and you can just change that and um, it, will, it will affect all those uh, places where you saw uh, like the job title you see it's these are these and uh, the job location is what you have here as soon as you if you add another a new location uh, like Mexico City immediately it will apply it will appear over here and of course if you delete it it will also disappear. So this is very um, customable by you. Now I want, do want to show you uh, this button, which is clear all slicers. Let's say you've made some selections, and instead of just unselecting the slicers this way, which could be uh, time consuming, you just can click on clear, clear all slicers, and this will just clear all the slicers. I usually recommend this to be on an active status so it's um, showing you all the active ones. Now let's take a look at the data sheets. If you click on here, unhide data sheets, um, within the, the file itself, part of the code works when you open the file, it hides all of the gray sheets, all the gray data sheets. But I want to share with you how they look and what happens, and just so you get a flow of it. So in the jobs database, every time you create a new job, a new line is created and with all the information. And plus there are dynamic formulas that check how many people fill the position and how many open positions, last time a position was filled, whether or not this line was closed manually, it saves the date, and the status of the job so it checks if it's closed or closed manually, and if not, it's active. So that's the job ID, and you can see here the new line that we created, new one, two, three. The apps database does the same thing for an app. So this is Tim Brown. He submitted his CV on this date for this job and um, for this uh, source. And also here, there are a lot of formulas that are being used basically uh, for their dashboard and for generating an updated view of your applicants. So all of these are formulas that I use um, so you can see the updated status of your uh, apps. And this is updated all the time, whenever you make a change. Apps event log is where all those changes are logged. Every time you have an update on your app, it's going to log a line with the change. So it's going to show you, um, for example, here the job was filled. That's what we, we did uh, now. And uh, any, any event that happens, it's going to be stored here by date, storing the result, who completed it. And over here also, there are a few uh, 
uh, formulas that are helpful for uh, passing the information. The last data base here is the event cycle. Here, uh, basically, it takes all of the people and their jobs, and for each of them, it's checking the time between events. So time between submission date to opening date, between phone interview to sub CV submission, etc., etc. And this is built for roughly 600 combinations, but of course, all the formulas can just be dragged. Uh, all the way to the bottom and um, it will work. So all of these eventually feed the uh, the main sheet which is the pivot table and this. You see it's referencing apps database. But also in the pivots there are a lot of pivot tables which this, this is how the, the charts are actually built. So we have a pivot table for each chart or other options like this. This is not a pivot table, but this is just something to take the average time based on the event cycle. So you can build this however you want, but eventually, and this is a f for the icons themselves, that's the, that's the data that's appearing on the icons. So back to the dashboard. So everything here is linked to the pivots. You saw the icons where they're coming from the different pivot tables and all the pivot tables are connected to each other and, and using the slicer you can slice and dice however you see fit. Um, so this was the applicant tracking system. I hope you found it uh, educational. Um, if you're interested in receiving this please check the link in the description and uh, if you're trying to, if you want to build it on your own, um, you can check out my videos on how to create user forms and um, everything else is pretty basic, just some simple calculations and connections between the different databases. Alright, have a good day and hope to see you next time.